I'm currently wrapping up some new work and uh, this time it's about exploring history letters in an uh, animation style that is true to reality. So basically, as you can see here, where you scroll up the actual letter in the paper rolls. And once you're done, they actually bounce off of each other like on a table. And it's an interesting animation here. Instead of keeping everything flat, let's bring back some life to this. And uh, I'm gonna walk you through from my visual design to the flow setup and into After Effects and the animation itself. So looking forward and uh, let's do this. Before we go into animation, let me showcase how I set up my design file. I have one section called animation flow, one is called presentation, showcasing the composition, and then we have lastly assets, where I collect all the assets that I export into After Effects. So if we zoom in into the first one, this is basically showcasing the flow from start to finish that I have in mind. Things can change along the way, but this is the core flow that I want to achieve. It starts by scrolling the letters one by one. They get collected in the top, as you can see in the rolls. And in motion, I'll explore how that looks like. And in the end, we have a simple empty state of no motor letters to be read. This presentation artboard showcases how I want it to look in the end with the device on the left and the feather on the right. Then we have the assets and here's everything that I want to export into After Effects to use as references or core assets. And something to be mentioned about this is that you can actually export assets from a design program directly into After Effects with plugins, which is great, but something that I've been finding is that the result is not always accurate and you can't control exactly how the relationship between assets should be. So as you can see here, instead I am very delicate with my structure in my design file where I can literally change these artboards and re-export them and get the same result. And then we have a section with components that I know I will not change later in animation. The only one here I know I will animate is the letter roll and this works as a reference for me of the final look. And then I have a final asset here for empty state, what I'm planning to animate in with some sort of reveal effect. And then moving on, it's uh, straightforward, a presentation background on its own, as well as the device. So there we have it all, and we are ready to go into After Effects. Now we're in After Effects, and my plan is to go through this project and showcase how I broke down each of the composition and how they work together in this flow. So to start off, we have the vertical swiping indicators in the top matched to any of the motion that happens underneath. And then here following, we have the letters itself. They are contained by four layers each, as you can see in color codes and placed one after each other. It's the roll base above some effects and then a letter in the bottom. And as you can see, the second and the third letter have each a null object intended to follow the swipe position to the first letter. Then moving further down, we have a simple asset of a notch in case we need this, along with a black status bar. The title lockup is an own asset. And lastly, we have the empty state. So now let's dig into the details of this letter animation and see how it was made. I'm zooming in here to have a proper view as well as in the timeline. I'm also going to adjust it horizontally here to see more keyframes and uh, all this is going to be covered in a new video coming up around custom workspaces in After Effects. So be sure to subscribe to see that one coming up soon. So now let's uh, scrub through this flow piece by piece and see what is happening. So as you can see it starts by the top part of this letter curling up like a turning page. And this is achieved by adding an effect called CC Page Turn. And here I can adjust any of the direction and position of that curling. It can be very dramatic or in this case that I chosen very subtle. And while this effect is happening, the letter itself moves upwards from the bottom. And then I have the main composition or wall base, which is above all of this, masking in at the same time. So with these keyframes, I'm masking in the roll base in the same shape as the curl itself until it gets fully revealed. 
and at the same time I have a shadow that gets applied once the roll is finished. And if we go into the roll composition, we can see that the letter here is moving in the same position as the main letter outside of it. So to take it from the beginning, each of the letter consists of a main composition called front, where we have the main asset of the letter. We then duplicate this one and call that one back. And then we drag in the front one in here, right clicking and choose transform, then flip vertical. So now we're gonna have the correct look for it to go into the roll. So just to break down this composition is that we have a bottom layer called roll base, which gives a linear gradient from gray to white to give that 3D dimension. We have another one called roll glare, which is a small detail in the middle to just give that extra glare. And then we have the back version of the letter scrolling here from the top to the bottom, timed in the same motion as the main composition. So let's take a look on how this looks like here when it's moving. You see it's blurred as well. So that's an individual adjustments layer above this that makes it fade away. It looks more natural that way. And without it, it looks too sharp to be under a paper stack. So I'm gonna enable that back and now we can see how it's looked like. It's blurred and it feels like a paper roll that is rolling up here. And now going back to the main composition to see this in context. And the next detail we're going to dive into now is how this paper roll actually increases in thickness as you're scrolling the letter up. And once it's completed, it also makes a subtle movement upwards with some rotation to give that extra touch of reality. So that was the first letter and now we're going to take a look at the other two. And it's basically the same animation, so all of this looks more complicated than it actually is. But with the main difference that this one is parented to a position layer following the first one. So let's have an overview here again and uh, select all the keyframes with the shortcut U on your keyboard. Then we're scrolling through the first letter and you can see it aligns the two top layers. It's really defining when the next one starts and it does this until the third one. And then the magic happens in the end really when these cards start to interact with each other again when they roll into each other a little bit. And to be honest, I don't think this specific motion is 100% correct here but you get the sense of this it's all about tweaking keyframes and easings here to really make it feel natural like in real life so now we are on the last part of this flow and that is about the presentation itself so as you can see here we have a composition that is called device mask where I similarly to a previous video I made of how to add UI animations into a specific screen and I do this in a column called trick mat and applying alpha to the UI itself. So now let's go back to the presentation composition and I'm going to showcase how I made that 3D letter effect in the bottom of this device. So I'm dragging in the composition of the letter again and I go into effect, distort and then corner pin. And this will allow me to control any of these corners to skew them in a perspective. So now is some iteration here to just get the right angle and the right size as well as position this under the device itself so it looks like it's continuously scrolling out of view. So once you have this in position, the only thing left you have to do is to trim this motion so it matches wherever the bottom is ending. We'll play this back now and we see that it's seamlessly going from the bottom and up. And to make this a little bit more realistic, I have a bend shadow that is above the letter in the bottom to reflect the light coming from above. And this layer is basically a layer with a gradient applied to it, going from black to white with opacity. And now to the final presentation detail, and that is a camera movement zooming into the three letters doing the final little bounce to each other in the end. I wanted to create this small detail in the end and give some more depth to this, even though this is flat assets. So the background itself is having an adjustments layer above it, which blurs out the feather, as you can see here, with a mask. And then on the camera itself, that's a layer that you manipulate with keyframes. And here, in this case, it zooms in and it moves the point of interest. 
So since this is flat assets, it's not going to look entirely 3D as you can see, but this is more a quick solution of how to get more depth. So there we have the entire animation flow in its completion and if you want to try to recreate this yourself I'm going to link my project source files in the description. And many of you have asked if I can do animation reviews, basically going through whatever you create, provide feedback or tweaks along the way. Please do so, send it to me on Instagram at Velgroff or tag me if you post it and I'll be happy to get back to you or even create a new video where I go through a collection of your work to learn and evolve together. Alright, so that was the end of this walkthrough and I hope you liked it. Thanks a lot for watching and let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you very soon again. That's a wrap.